<laughs> uh, Matthew Lehner of Linda Drive in Sussex. Uh, thank you, Mr. Senator Brenner, for coming to Sussex today. Leadership has always been a key aspect of my life, um, and this year um, I've worked hard to be elected as the Hamilton Sussex Class of 2021 President and Senior Patrol Leader of my Boy Scout Troop in Menominee Falls. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And it is my duty to listen to other people and to address their concerns and ideas appropriately. Um, in light of the school shooting in Stillman Douglas um, High School in Parkland, Florida, members of my class and people in my troop have expressed their um, remorse and concern and concern about their safety at school. And that they wonder um, that the elected leaders um, will do something to prevent this from happening in the future. So as a gun owner and a sportsman myself, my question is, will you risk an A rating and future campaign contributions from the NRA and vote to pass legislation banning the AR-15 and similar assault style weapons. With, this we with these weapons only purpose being to quickly kill mass quantities of people, period. Well, the answer is no, I don't and here's why. Uh, the AR-15 is a semi-automatic weapon. Automatic weapons have been banned for decades, except with a very, very hard to get permit. So you can't go in and get an automatic weapon. I am for banning bump stocks. You know, bump stocks turn a legal semi-automatic weapon into an illegal automatic weapon, you know, extremely easily. And that was what was used in the shooting uh, at the Country and Western uh, concert in Las Vegas a few months ago. Uh, Semi-automatic weapons are legal in, for hunting in most states of the Union, including Wisconsin. Uh, uh, a weapon can be used for an illegal and a criminal purpose, true. But the fact is, is that there are many hunters in this state that use semi-automatic weapons that are similar to AR-15s or AR-15s. And the Wisconsin DNR is setting up our fish and game regulations. Uh, you know, have said that this is a sporting weapon that can be used for sporting purposes, you know, assuming you get a hunting license, uh, you know, assuming uh, you are hunting during the, the open game season. And I don't think it is fair that because one person who is mentally deranged ends up using one of these types of weapons to shoot up a school, uh, there's a reason to ban these weapons for thousands or maybe even millions of people who use these types of firearms for illegal hunting purposes. You know, I grant you that, you know, a bad apple can spoil the whole barrel, but I think in response to the earlier question relative to school safety, you know, I have outlined things that will be effective and things that Congress is doing. Providing money to harden schools, uh, to provide money uh, to have either law enforcement or retired law enforcement uh, in schools. Having a red flag provision that Senator Rubio uh, has suggested, which the NRA is not for, but which I am for, uh, so that somebody who is exhibiting mental issues, you know, can, uh, you go into court, you have the due process, and you can get a restraining order, just like you can get a restraining order in a person who is committing domestic violence you know, at home. But, you know, all we can do is legislate. We do not do the enforcing. Uh, I will repeat that on Tuesday I'm scheduled to have a hearing on what happened where all of the warning signs about Nicholas Cruz ended up being, the ball ended up being dropped, you know, both by the FBI and by local law enforcement. People have got to be sensitive to that when tips are uh, called on in. And from what I have heard, everybody in town knew that Nicholas Cruz was a bad person. You know, and he admitted on social media that he wanted to be a professional school shooter, and nothing was done about him. And this was a preventable tragedy. And it was a preventable tragedy not because the law was deficient, but because the execution of the law uh, uh, ended up being deficient. And you'll probably hear more about that on the news on Tuesday night if we end up having the hearing. There was a congresswoman that died uh, on Friday, and uh, if the funeral is on Tuesday, uh, uh, everything is going to get postponed so that we can go to the funeral. 
uh, on that. But we'll reschedule a hearing if we have to reschedule a hearing. Uh, you know, what I can say is every time there's a tragedy that occurs, you know, the pressure is on Congress to pass something that will prevent the tragedy from happening again. Ten years ago, Congress passed, I supported it, the NRA did not, President George W. Bush signed a law that made it a, crime, a federal crime to carry a firearm within a thousand feet of any school in the country. That sure didn't work down in Parkland, didn't it? But Nicholas Cruz violated the law. And everybody thought that because we passed this law, we'd solve the problem because there were no, nobody could legally have a firearm, you know, within a thousand feet of any school. So, you know, I'm, listen, I'm interested in doing things that are effective in this, you know, rather than bowing before the TV cameras. And that's the kind of congressman that I have been, you know, ever since I was first elected. I was effective in getting Nicks in. The, the Brady Bill over the NRA's objectives. Uh, I supported the Lautenberg Amendment that allows uh, NICS to ban firearm sales to people who have had restraining orders against them where they have threatened violence in their houses. You know, that has been effective. And, you know, when you have a restraining order against you, you can't possess any kind of firearm. You either got to turn them in voluntarily or involuntarily. Those are the kinds of things that I am interested in. But to say that banning semi-automatic weapons, when most of them, the overwhelming amount of them, are used for legal hunting purposes because state DNRs have said that they are, you know, a sporting type firearm, because one nutcase, you know, who fell through the cracks, you know, ended up shooting up the school, ends up discriminating against people who use firearms for legal purposes. And I think, pun intended, well, we've got to use a rifle shot to go after the people who either have a criminal record, which means they've usually used the firearm in the commission of a crime, uh, or who have got mental problems. We've got a loophole in the law on that, and you know, I support plugging that loophole with the red flag provision. But the, you know, Mr. Sensenbrenner, these laws we can we can go on and on forever and ever, creating all these small little laws that do that only do so much. We there is always going to be loopholes through those small little laws, no matter what you do to try to stop it. What we need to do is we, as American people, need to you know look at you guys when stuff happens. You guys in Congress should be responsible for something like that well, that happens during a tragedy. You know, the, the answer to that is, you know, I'm only responsible for me. I'm not responsible for anybody else in the world on uh, that. You know, I think I have a record, you know, that goes after effective means of dealing with this problem. Uh, and I am looking for effective means in dealing with the uh, for problems like this from arising in the future. Again, Parkland was a preventable tragedy. It's unfortunate that the ball ended up being dropped and Nicholas Cruz ended up falling through the cracks. We need to deal with mental health problems. The hole is not in the firearms law, the hole is in the mental health law, where you actually have to commit a crime and be a danger to others before anybody can do anything about it. You know, whether it's to get a restraining order, whether it's to force you into some kind of treatment for uh, mental health. And there are a lot of people where they see somebody who is the, has the potential of violence who won't come up and say anything, you know, about it. And, you know, we've had the see something, say something thing, you know, as far as terrorist activity, which has been, I think, reasonably effective. We've got to do that for people who have got mental health problems you know, on that to get the treatment that they need before they go and harm and kill a whole lot of other people. So we're not talking about AR-15, you know, that's a piece of machinery which does what the finger on the trigger tells it to do. Uh, and if the finger on the trigger, you know, shoots the gun so that somebody can, you know, come back, you know, with a 12-point buck, you know, on the top of their car during deer hunting season, that's legal, you know, and it's something you know, that uh, most people would agree should be uh, legal on that. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, getting at a Nicholas Cruz, you know, is something that could be done. And, you know, again, I think that the red flag provision where we, 
put the due process first because that's what we do as Americans rather than putting it second uh, on that. Uh, we will be able uh, uh, to get the guns away from people who would misuse them because uh, they have got a mental health issue and hopefully get them into some kind of a treatment so that they can become productive members of society. But how do we know that for sure that they're mentally ill? How do we know that for sure? Well, how can we how can we prove somebody you know, and just you know, the, automatically ban them from buying weapons? Well, the well, hunters use a single shot. Right? Well, well, you know, you know, you know, if, you know if, if I can answer your question, you know, you you know, you don't know that for sure. But the way the mental health laws are written now is that in order to prove somebody is a danger to others, they've got to be a danger to others and to have an overt act like shooting up the school on um, that before. Uh, you know, they can get put in there. And it has been against the law for decades for anybody with a mental health adjudication to possess any kind of a firearm. You know, ditto people who have got the uh, criminal convictions on their record. That's been the law for about 80 years now. Uh, so, you know, you have to look at what is causing the problem. The finger on the trigger is what's causing the problem. And if you've got somebody who's not all there up here, being the finger on the trigger, you're going to have a tragedy. And we have a tragedy. So, you know, look at what has caused the tragedy. The tragedy was not him using a gun that might be legal for hunting uh, in most states of the Union. The tragedy was the fact that he was bragging about, you know, on social media, the fact that he wanted to become a professional school shooter. Now, you know, he could use a single shot uh, firearm to shoot up a school rather than a semi-automatic. The thing is, is to get to him before he does that. And I've described, you know, a means which I don't think the NRA really likes, but going into court, you know, and whoever the respondent is, you know, who is accused of having some kind of a mental problem, you know, will you know, be able to tell his story to the judge and the judge will be able to make a determination. And it's just like, you know, if somebody who is involved in uh, uh, a, uh, you know, disruptive uh, 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 home situation can go in and get a restraining order, you know, against their spouse or, you know, whoever is living with them and the restraining order gets put into the mix system and they can't uh, for the duration of the restraining order, possess any kind of a firearm. So, you know, don't look at the piece of machinery, which is used probably in, you know, million to one uh, uh, chances of, uh, of being used for illegal purposes, get at the one person who is the bad apple in the barrel, and the way to do that, you know, is by getting a, an adjudication that he is a danger to others before he actually goes and shoots places up and harms or kills others. Uh, now we're going to people who live in the 